how to run a D and D or Pathfinder or whatever RPG campaign with a preset mod I, I put together, um, the One World mod, along with a bunch of little things. I've just kind of organized all this. Here's our map. You know, this is I've made a I've taken a world map. You can take whatever you want. Just download this from the workshop. I called it simple One World setup. Now, once you have this loaded. From the workshop, you change to black so you can control everything and see through the fog and whatnot. You know, set up your contextuals, options, and whatnot permissions for all your players. This is our actual mod here, the One World. You'll initially have to uh, set it up like uh, from the base one. Um, so this is the base one. This is just like you start One World simple. With that workshop that I've already made you don't have to do this it's already all set up you just have to do the later stuff but if you want to do one from scratch yourself you initialize 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 you have to rename these real quick uh so like test and test and then it initializes lock it yep there we go okay now we have our world uh we can start putting stuff into it so we put this little arrow here, press new, and now we get these things. Uh, these are our, our map zones of the actual, what, what, what will appear for the players and everybody. Um, leave the SBX underscore in there. That's very important. It won't work if you take that out. Um, so we'll just make this test. And then what you do with it is you can, this is one way to do this. You can take like an image you've already downloaded. I don't I do cloud every time because if you do local, you can delete it and lose it forever. I don't know what this image is going to be. Okay, it's an image of me. Whatever. Uh, so you can drop that in now, and it'll come up. And it's a picture of. It's a picture of me. Great. Uh, you can change the side that it's on. Fit to frame, whatever. You press this one, and it, it fits it. So then, you know, you have that. It also gives you one of these tokens. Um, and that's just like a link token. Every time you press link, you'll get a token. That lets you link it to another map. So, you know, if we went down to back to the clear, I think. New. We get another one of these. You know, change the name of it. You go to custom and pick a picture like okay this is actually like a picture i took of another map so it's going to be a picture uh, but just to show you the idea fit, fit it to the frame go back you click on this it gets the last thing and you click on this it'll actually fix it um then you can put on these and now you can do that i'm going to go back to the actual map we're going to be working on once you're into a world you're not going to customize it you're like just going to use this one you can cr take like pictures of maps or or whatever and use them as these like a map or a background or a uh i'll show you uh, just a something for the players to walk on so we'll initialize this we want to do something simple like our our jungle river so by itself this is pretty cool we already have a pretty cool little setup but the really really cool thing about what this can do is press the build button when you've already built something or have a pre-built mix it out of that stuff there you go you have a whole pre-built thing there that's you know and you can just some of these are already pre-made you don't have to do anything to make them like this one was pre-made i just got it from the uh workshop you can press shift tab team workshop and you look up one world and you can find a lot of pre-made things what you'll see is like um, um and this is i've already put all this previously into the game into this one you could like if you just want to use this as a starter that's totally fine i've even made these little places you can like go here and this is what i meant like this is like a floor to what the players are actually walking on and then you can build on top of it. So you can have like pre-built stuff all around. To get to the actual juicy stuff as far as this goes, say we want to create like a new thing here. Like we want to put a new land into this. We just got a pre-made one. I'm going to show you two methods of, of doing this. 
So we're going to do uh, clear, get a new one, and then that's one way. Why not? We do want to clear. We go into our uh, games workshop. Find one of these like one worlds that I haven't used yet. Like hit this one right here, I think might do. Search it. And you're looking for this right here, the OWX. Got it. And now just drop it in. There you go. We got our little token here. We go back to the awake world and then we'll create a token for the awake world. Very important. Not too important, but sometimes it can be important. What? Uh, I'll show you. So we'll put the farmstead that we just made. Just randomly pop this in. And now we go there and we have this. And this is actually really cool. We already have a grass here. That's going to be, we can use that. We're putting this linking, this original map to here. Because otherwise we don't have anything on here. What can happen is we can lose it. It can all like, say you save it at like this. And then you like leave and you come back and then like you go to initialize and it just initializes this. There's no going back to what you did. So you have to have a map linked every time you go. Make sure you link back to your original map just in case you you save by accident and you can't come back here. So let's look at what this farm looks like. I just I just downloaded this off the workshop. I haven't done anything to it. Loaded it in. This is what it looks like. Nice, nice, that's beautiful. Just a couple seconds and we have this. Like no time at all. You can make any kind of story you want. Maybe this whole farm gets overrun by bandits. Who knows? We can, you can do copy. I'm not really sure what copy does, but I like linking more because all you do is link. Go back to your world, come to here. And maybe we just keep this whole region kind of looking like this. Back to Farmstead. Edit. We get the tile here. We can change the name of the tile. So like, we'll say planes, right? It's just some planes. Um, exit, edit. Now we have the planes. It's already linked and everything. So the link back to the original map. And we have a separate one and it's already built but if we go in our little bags here so i have a couple bags here i haven't explained yet um but we'll go into our building bag and we're just going to grab something that's going to be terrible here um let's see let's do big stuff we'll pull big stuff out all right um, we'll just grab some trees and you want to make sure when you pull something out you kind of copy and paste it back in so you don't lose it and then you just copy it more paste it you know all around the there you go so this is just an example of like a little bit of what you can do now that we have this but it's separate from the farm all we do is we've built a little bit onto it you press pack now it's completely separate from the farm it is no longer the same thing at all when we press build, it'll just be those trees. That's not all that stuff. What we did, we just we literally just jacked their planes. Like this this whole, we I didn't have to go find this. I just took it from somebody else. Like um, I have it here too. A couple of things. Uh, this stone base. I'm pretty sure I took this from somebody. I might have found this one. This one I think I found. Um. I took this from somebody. But yeah, you could re you reuse this as like another church somewhere else or something. And you know, like the it's endless what you could really do there. These this these are for building. Like this bag's completely for building. It's got all all the tools you could need. I've gathered to to build whatever you want really. These are your pre-made maps, so you can just go to your. Um, really anything doesn't matter. Just go, uh, I usually keep this entire thing hidden until they find parts of it. Um, I'll put like a like look down on it, get really high up, and put like a full fog of war over it. I don't like that one. Kind of straighten it out. Put a full fog of war, and then 
Like maybe we're starting off like uh, right here, I think. So only this part of the map is revealed to the players when they come to here. It should just be like built like that every time they come to it. We have these pre-made maps. You can search through it, but you just grab one. I'm just gonna grab one at random. So you can make this as big as you want it with plus and minus or small. Um, you know, you can put your characters through here, imagine whatever you want, but there's a ton of these little uh, extra maps you can use. So you can create stories out of anything. Um, these are two separate things. These are all kinds of monsters and NPCs and player models. These are specifically monsters along with their cards. But yeah, these are like, you know, oozes, oozes. There's phase. There's the Fey card somewhere. So um, I'll just pull out. We got Fey's. We got the Fey models. Uh, Abominable Beauty. So we can go into this thing. But uh, you could just like associate anything. Abominable Beauty is a green hag or whatever. Um, so there you go. You have a model to go with any of the stuff you want to do. You go to different parts of the map. Your fog will always stay the same. So, you know, every time you switch to a new one, you'll want to go to your fog, reset it, and then switch to the map you want to do. Build it. Set up your characters on top of it. I don't think the fog's going to work very well for this one, so you might want to just, like, spawn stuff in as you do it. So, starting from what these tools actually do, and what we all have on the screen here, we have initiative, so these you can have like six players here, um, you know, do their initiatives for each role or uh, if you want to. You don't have to use this, um, it's just kind of like a little guide for everybody. This is their player health uh, for each of the different players. This is a little revealer I use. Um, whenever you have Fog of War, like, uh, I think it's like this one. The revealer, grab him, he's a little difficult. You might not want to use the Pokemon because I just like Haunter. But it will reveal it for the players. You could even, um, and then you go back to your hidden thing if you want to delete it. Like it's still there, but you have to delete it. Like it's, um, once you re reveal it, if you reset it, like, say you do this, you know, reveal it. And now it's still there, but you want to actually, re like, you can reset it, right? Like, reset fog. So now it's like that again. Um, and everything inside here, the players, like, if I change my, my color, I can't, well, okay. So in this case, where it did that, you have to go to fog, height, raise it. Okay, so yeah, and then raise the height, and it's above it. So now the players can't see inside there. Okay, um, but then like, you know, it is still there after you reveal it and everything. You have to go back to your Fog of War and delete it. I don't really use Hidden, I use Fog of War, I think. Um, I'm, I'm actually not sure the difference, I'll have to look into it, but that's what I do. Um, so yeah, he reveals it. You can even change their, um, their revealer options. So any object, any object can be a revealer like you just select an object like this goat and then toggles and it's reveal fog of war and once it has that option you can go to revealer and you can change the size and everything and the color so normally it's set to reveal to all but you can actually just reveal it to like pink say like one of your players is a rogue type and they're sneaking into a place or they're somewhere else completely by whatever means um they can rev they oh you can make it so that only they get revealed where they're at for them and they can't see the stuff that's happening for the other players if you want to do it like that um and you know they have to describe what's going on around them moving on we have we'll do two things here Black, we gotta be black again so we can see our tools. We we'll only do these two tools here because they kind of go together. So this is our measurement tool. 
And this is our DNZ model tool uh, injector. So it sounds fancy, but I only use it for one purpose. I'm sure it has a lot of really cool things it can do, but you take any model and you put it on there and all of a sudden it has that little number under it. That's all I use it for because this number lets me know how far this model has tra traveled. And that goes along with this because it, I can change this number. So say this is, you know, a hundred feet or a hundred steps or whatever. Um, so now the thing will tell me a lot, like it's a lot more. Like it's no longer 15, it's now 40 to go that far. Um, so that's what these two things do. This gives them the measurement. Your Each model you put it on it will get a measurement. And this one changes the measurement to however you need it to be. You can even go into your options and your grid option there. Whoops. The grid options here. You can change how the grid looks. The opacity, so make it come up a lot more. It's This table's on top of it so you can't see it. But um, yeah, snapping, whatever. All right, moving on. We have, this is our player uh, record counter. So we can put our player's names here, test. We can put their hit points, their armor class, and all this just to kind of keep up a uh, quick info of the basic information you want to go over. You can do this for all six players. Um, that's that. That's pretty much that for that stuff the players get a hold of. Now we go to the D&D, the DM tools. Um, so first we have these cards. You can pretty much pull them it's pretty obvious pull them like randomly and you get a little story immediate little story uh, a few days ago undead monsters intimidated a little girl oh, i have these backwards you gotta actually toggle it so looping effect heavy rain now it's raining um we can do snow probably want to do and we can do fog um and then we have a little audio tool we can do like some music uh, you can change the time of day, like how it feels. This is like a little random crazy item thing. Choker or Pez. Some, it's gonna have some crazy action. This just lets people do homebrew stuff, you know. This blinds all the players. Once you click it, all the players will be blinded. That's your whole new trumpet. We have... Uh, the flying stand, you can put a model on top of it, and the model will be flying. Like this flying chicken here. There you go. That's how that works. And then you have, this is a zone to like, if you're curious about how a zone, like, you know, it says, uh, shoot a cone of whatever. You can do any of these states, 30 by 30 foot one, there's a 10 foot one, you know, any, there's AOEs, anything you can need, they're right there in that, um, this one right here, and you have infinite of them. Uh, torch, I usually use these as a revealer, you know, turn it on the lit, and then toggle it as a revealer. Revealer, Field Fog of War. I just like how it looks. I think it's nice. You can also attach it to players, like, um, attach it to a model. Like, you go to, like, say, this chicken or whatever. You can take this, get as close as possible to the chicken, uh -oh. and then probably lock them if you wanted to to really make it work, but. There you go. Now, if you pick up the chicken, it's carrying the torch. <clears throat> so that's what you can do. You use this link button, this combine, just click combine. And then if you want to uncombine it, I think you just do it again. Yeah, you just do it again and it uncombines it. But yeah, that's how you do that. I can't think of anything else that I could really explain here. Um, you know, hope this helps out anybody trying to D&D &D with Tabletop Simulator, because I think it's a very powerful tool, especially with this one world.